I'm Nikki D, and lovely to meet you all, well, see you all, and nice to see some familiar faces. So I'm going to talk about bisexuality when biphobia affects the relationship that a bisexual person might be in with a monosexual person. A monosexual meaning gay or straight. Um, so I've divided it into three parts. In the first part, I'll talk very briefly about biphobia because Meg John has already covered it. And then I'll look more specifically at relationships and how biphobia is visible in the relationship, where bisexuality is seen as the problem rather than biphobia. And at the end, I'll introduce just a couple of slides on what I'm called bioware therapy. I think, I think it was Meg John that mentioned bioware therapy. And it's not some new therapeutic pa paradigm to add to the 400 odd that already exists, but it's some pointers for good practice in terms of working sensitively and with awareness when you've got a bisexual client. So, by phobic stereotype, we can divide biphobia into five categories which Meg John talked about. So biphobic stereotyping, can anyone tell me what comes to mind of a negative stereotype of a bisexual? Promiscuous. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely that. John Davis on Platinum Common. Say that again? John Davis on Platinum Common, so a hidden secret. Right, sure, yeah. Sex addicts, can't be trusted, sitting on the fence, absolutely not making your mind up, greedy, yeah, yeah. You realise you're a lesbian one day, somebody said to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> how long ago was that? About <laughs> ten years ago. And, how, and have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I remember my mum saying, you can't have your cake and eat it, Nikki. It's like, why not? Why wouldn't you, <laughs> why wouldn't you want to do that? <laughs> how wonderful. Lots of cakes. Um, what, what else? What else do we hear about bisexuals? Confused. We've definitely got confused. Threesome. Yeah. For any bisexual? Mainly for women. Yeah, it seems to be definitely, yeah. Um, and with, with guys, it will be your spreaders of STIs, um, not to be trusted, breaking up marriages. <laughs> I, Nikki, I had a supervisor who said that bisexual had a fantasy of omnipotence. They wouldn't give up their fantasy. Wonderful. <laughs> Quite agree. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Don't give it up. Right. <laughs> and other biphobic or other elements of biphobia is bisexual denial, which Meg Jo talk ab talked about, which is literally the denial of, sec of bisexuality. You're gay, you're straight, you're lying. And it's through phase phrases like um, it's a phase you're going through or it's a bridge to being gay. Um, it's immaturity, it's all those statements are really what they're saying is there's no such thing as bisexuality. Sometimes people will believe that certain groups of people can be bi but not others. So women might be seen as possibly being bi but men, no way. Or white people can be bi, people of colour, no way. So there's all those types of odd, um, oh yeah, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> And bisexual erasure is obviously the basically reclaiming someone as straight or bi as lesbian, straight, lesbian or gay if they're actually bi. So Freddie Mercury had sex with men and women all through his life, he's called gay. Mm -hmm. um, Malcolm X, I've just re recently read about, had sex with guys as well as women in his life. But he's talked about as straight. Nina Simone, Marlene Dietrich, I mean lots and lots of um, examples of people that had bisexual histories or experiences or lives, but were defined as monosexual. You're also erased, your bisexuality is erased, because the world obviously sees us being defined by the gender of the person we're with. But that's, we've kind of, we talked about that in most of the presentations. Um, by marginalization and exclusion, Meg John talked a lot about this, so I won't go on about this, but it's when bisexuals, specific kind of experiences are marginalized and push to one side. And double discrimination, obviously when the bisexual, when the gay community or the straight community <coughs> is discriminating against bi's. I gave an example um, when I did this presentation for the relationship therapy course that Damien <coughs> and Leah um, ran <coughs> last year. And I gave an example of 20 years ago when I lived in Brixton with a girlfriend 
and we would have like daily homophobic harassment and it was homophobic because people didn't know that I was you know one of us was bi and it was being spat at and you know names called and threats of violence and actual violence and I remember pride coming to Brixton and being really excited because finally I was going to be somewhere I could hold my girlfriend's hand I could be affectionate and I wouldn't risk you know any kind of onslaughts and and the lesbian comedian Rona Cameron was comparing the day and she welcomed all the gay men to Pride and she welcomed <coughs> all the lesbian women to Pride and she told bisexuals to fuck off, we're not welcome. And it was that, that experience of like not feeling safe anywhere or not, fi not fitting in anywhere that kind of made me more, more and more determined to say that I'm bisexual as a kind of statement of visibility I ideally wouldn't probably use any term, but for me it's very political in our culture to stand up and say that we have attractions for more than one gender, if we do. So this is external um, biphobia, and no wonder that for many bisexuals they internalise the experience. I don't think you can really see this, can you? Yeah. A bit. Oh, you can, cool. So internalised biphobia is obviously believing the negative stereotypes of bisexuals and it almost always includes internalised homophobia. Not in every case. I've got one client of mine who is struggling because he's married um, to a woman and has strong sexual desires for men and he, he doesn't appear to have any homophobic, internalised any homophobia but he cannot reconcile the fact that he can have attractions to more than one gender. It's that that he struggles with. Um, the, the main feelings that people experience if they've internalised negative belief systems about bias is huge amounts of shame, a lot of confusion, a sense of isolation, a lot of fear of what this means, and huge amounts of guilt. So the clients that I see, these are the feelings that they're dealing with all the time. Um, and bo ba bottom line, bisexuality is experienced as a burden uh, and they don't want it. They don't want to have these feelings of desire for more than one gender. I won't talk about the higher rates of risk because it's already been talked about, but no wonder this, you know, there are higher rates of risk for bisexual people. I think one thing that wasn't talked about is that within the higher rates of risk, bi women, whether cisgendered or transgendered, have a much higher rate of sexual assault like massively high, you know, the stats are so much higher for bi women than for lesbian women or heterosexual women. I think because bi women are eroticised and hypersexualized and commodified, I think it's that. I think to, because we represent such a threat to a kind of patriarchal way of understanding women's sexuality, the way of taking the sting out of the threat is to make it seem as though we only perform bisexually for men, for straight men, but we're not really bisexual. And I think it's that, it's that kind of sexualization of us um, as always available, as up for anything that means we're possibly more at risk. Well, definitely more at risk. So bisexuals in relationship. <coughs> so the di some of the dilemmas facing bi people in relationships is how they transition to bisexuality. There was some reference to this already. But if someone's always experienced themselves as bi, there may be a very smooth transition. But someone's come from experiencing themselves as gay or come from experiencing themselves as straight, it brings up a lot of different elements that they're having to contend with. Is there a whole community that might feel they're being betrayed, you know, if they've gone from being gay to, sudden, to, to being experiencing themselves as bisexual. Um, they can also transition away from bisexuality. And I know it w uh, Meg John talked about accepting phases as part of normal, natural, healthy sexuality. I'd call it a sta you know, stages, because phases still have such a negative connotation. Um, and there can be stages. My sense of bisexuality today is different than it was a year ago, than it is 10 years ago, because sexuality, your experience of being embodied with a sexuality alters. Um, other other things for buyers to face is reconciling different attractions for different genders. So some people are very at ease with their levels of attractions for different genders, but many clients come to me and they're really, they're really angsting over the fact that they're only sexually attracted to one gender, 
they can't imagine possibly being in a relationship with that gender, but they can be sexually and romantically attracted to another gender or two. Um, and that's fine. It's about the kind of variation within bisexuality. I had a therapist, only went for one session, he was disastrous. But he, I went to him, I didn't know his sexual orientation, and I said I'm you know, bisexual, and talked about whatever it was, and he said, ah, did you know I'm bisexual? I was like, no. And he said, and I'm perfectly in the middle. And it was just this ridiculous <laughs> statement which made me think, well, I'm not going to come back. Um, <laughs> what does that mean, perfectly in the middle? For a start, it's a binary notion that there's only two genders. And also, yeah, I don't know. Is he, he's with a woman one night and a man the next? Or, um, so what else? Not feeling understood and not fitting in anywhere. Um, and needing to find a kinship a friendship family of people that are like-minded, missing the sexual and emotional connection of another gender. This is rarely talked about, but I think it's it can be really heartfelt. It can be called male longing, trans longing, female longing, but a real longing for a different body or a different emotional connection. But you can feel that longing if you're mono monosexual in a particular closed relationship, you could long for someone of a different ethnicity or a different age or a different body shape. So it's not just about bisexuals and their attraction to more than one gender, which is often what a monosexual person with a bi bisexual um, partner will be really <coughs> worried about, this idea that we'll always need another gender to keep us sec you know, sexually satisfied. Um, Dealing with, obviously, the, bi the, the partner's biphobia. But we'll talk about that in the next slide. Um, so a partner's biphobia might be seen in these ways. So the partner not telling their friends or family that their partner's bi, so being way too ashamed of the partner's sexual orientation. Um, I can't actually read that, so I'll just keep doing this. Ignoring a partner's previous relationships with another gender. Um, being threatened by gender-based sexual fantasies. That the, the monosexual person might have really loved gender-based sexual fantasies of a monosexual person, but when it's a bi person, they're seeing that as a potential threat. They may not want their bisexual partner to be out, and they may feel undermined and hostile when their bi, when their bi partner references by experiences, by identity, um, and by issues. I had a girlfriend that would say to me, you know, why do you keep banging on about being bi, Nikki? I'd say, well, everyone keeps telling me I'm lesbian. I said, what would you do if people kept telling you you're straight? Um, that, I think that worked. Um, <laughs> but this idea that, you know, you just, you, you're too pushy. You, you kind of keep on talking about your sexual identity and pushing it, you know, being just too out there. So bi, a biphobia in a monosexual person might also be seen in them feeling undermined or, oops, I just said that, in believing in biphobic stereotypes. So the more extreme of this is biphobic abuse, and I think it's way more common um, than we suspect, and it's hardly ever talked about. But a, an abusive partner may play on kind of on biphobic <laughs> stereotypes to control the other person. They may threaten to out the bi partner and they may use bisexual shaming. So calling them a dirty bisexual or a promiscuous bisex bisexual or any kind of shaming references to their bisexuality. They may trivialize and dismiss bisexuality um, or ban any references to bisexuality. So the, <coughs> the bisexual person may feel they have to kind of, their sexuality has to be kind of disappeared in order to be accepted or safe, actually. There may be pressure to, be, to choose a side, to, cl to claim that they're gay or straight, even though they're not. And more extreme is violence or, and sexual violence, coercing a bisexual partner into having sex with other people or a certain sexual acts as punishment. I've th there are definitely a couple of couples that I've worked with, with a straight guy and a bi woman, and they were swingers. Um, and the, the w in both cases, the bi women felt coerced into having sex with women in a threesome scenario. And that element of the, the coercion in the relationship, the biphobic element, was, wasn't picked up at all. You know, it was, but it was very much prevalent, and this is very common, I think. 
So let's, this actually, on the transition I did at home, this came in with the little tinkles because <laughs> I've lost the tinkles <laughs> because that's really the heavy side of being bisexual is coping with all that crap in the world and, and also within your relationship sometimes. But what are the positives? Meg John talked a little bit about this, but what do you think? What are positives about being bisexual? You can think of any. You can be flexible. You can be flexible? In what way? In that you can uh, you know, accept being attracted to whoever attracts you. Yeah, yeah. What else comes to mind? So more open-minded, more flexible, more understanding agenda. Anything else come to mind for people who are or are not bi? Maybe slightly less invested in the norms of certain communities. Yeah, yeah. More likely to feel free to invent how you're going to have a relationship. Or, I mean, I, I, I think it's wonderful. I can't imagine why more people aren't desperately wishing they were bisexual because it is so much richer and more, well, it's inclusive, obviously. You potentially also have more options. Um, that sounds a bit trite, but if you're quite picky, like me, it comes in useful. <laughs> so, p positives of being bi, and I've got two slides left, thank you, Dominic, to introduce some key ideas on, for any of us as therapists, to be work more sensitively and with awareness when we're with bisexual clients. So it's avoid making assumptions about client sexuality. If two guys are walking in to have couple therapy, relationship therapy, don't assume they're both gay. If a guy and a woman are walking in, you don't assume they're straight, you also don't assume their gender. Um, awareness of the variance in bisexuality. Noticing how comfortable or not we are with our own bisexual feelings or our own bisexual experiences and biphobic, whatever we've absorbed of biphobia in the world. It's being mindful of the increased risk for bias and adopting, this is very much a pink therapy um, mantra, is adopting an affirming stance, not just a tolerant one. And then finally, noticing and addressing when bisexuality is denied or it's erased or by stereotypes are used and using language that keeps bisexuality visible. <coughs> so rather than saying lesbian relationship, gay relationship, straight relationship, when you know someone is bi, I would say same sex or sex, you know, in a relationship with someone with a different gender. Um, it's awareness of minority stress, which was talked about already, and the concealment that a bisexual person may feel forced into in order to pass as gay or pass as straight and feel safer in the world. Um, it's being avoiding problematizing bisexuality and noticing the positives. So many clients will come to me and they're they really feel it as a burden. So it's bringing out, sorry, did I do? <laughs> Covered the mic. <laughs> and then finally acknowledging a client's survival and resilience. Um, and on the last slide is helping them to be proud to be bi, which I did have a backdrop, back, it was a lot of clapping that we're on <laughs> with the <laughs> introduction of this slide. Thank you. <laughs> Slice. <laughs>